My name is Stacy Dewink, and we worked on a vision for the future of the town of Southport, New York. We are all enrolled in an urban design studio that's focused on civic engagement at Alfred State College, also in New York. Some past studios have worked on projects in Bath, Camp Bell, and Savona, and they're all very similar to Southport. Southport is located in Chemung County, to the south of Elmira and to the north of the Pennsylvania border, and it's in the northernmost section of the Appala Appalachian region. And Alfred is in red and Southport's in blue on the map. Before we began our involvement in this past August, the town adopted a comprehensive plan in March of 2014. This document helped us to understand um, all the people of Southport and what they really needed. And so our project was put a, to put a vision to this document and then to expand upon it. To summarize our problem statement, some of the challenges that are faced in Southport include a decreasing population since reaching its peak in the 1970s, a lack of diversity and in infrastructure, vacant storefronts and residential lots, and a lack of connectivity between the commercial and residential areas, and that really hinders the businesses and disrupts the feeling of community and identity. So if you notice in the existing conditions photographs, there's large parking lots in front of buildings, there's a vacant building on the corner where you enter town, um, there's a very few sidewalks, there's not any street trees, um, there's not a strong street edge, it's not a very friendly place to walk around. Um, the population is approximately 10,000 and is aging, and many of the people that live in Southport commute to Elmira, so very few actually work where they live, and the per capita income for the area is approximately $18,000, so cost is a factor in everything that we're looking at. And now I'm going to pass it on to Eric to talk about the program. Good morning, my name is Eric Leips, and I'm gonna go over the program, which consisted of three phases over the course of 15 years. Um, Southport needs to create a more sustainable community in which they are a destination and not a through fair with an identity, which we are going to create through the use of a gateway. We plan systematic redevelopment in order to, vi uh, create a vision for their ideas. When we initially visited the site, we spoke with the municipal officials in the area and told them that we were looking at the center of Southport district in order to improve upon it. And we went over their master plan with them and they told us their concerns and we were asked to look into not only the center of Southport district, but also to look into the Lower Mount Zor and Universal Village Cedar District. We then documented existing site conditions by walking around and taking photographs of the area. This was in order to analyze these, uh, to use with the LEED Neighborhood Development System. Uh, LEED Neighborhood Development is a sustainable baseline in order for communities to create a walkable, connected, and engaged community. After the evaluation, we concluded that they were only, at the time, able to get four out of the 41 points. On October 12th, we had an interim critique with all of the supervisors, and we showed them our perception of their vision for their town. And we gained feedback from them in order to enhance our presentation and their town. Now I will let my peers show you the vision that we have created. Hello, hi, my name is Clayton Lounsbury and I worked with Eric Leips and Jason Prine on the lower bulkhead district, which is the uh, red rectangle on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Now, our goals for Southport were to strengthen the sense of community by bringing in more businesses and people to the community. In order to do this, we had to create more healthy activities. We had to give them more bike paths and walkability throughout the town. Now we're hoping this would give them more of a destination instead of just a through stop. Now, the image I'm gonna be showing you are at the end of the 15 year marker. So these are gonna be at 15 years in the future, okay? Uh, so we wanted to create a gateway for Southport. So what we did is we enlarged their sign, giving them more of a welcoming sign. And we also created several new businesses throughout it. Also we increased the amount of trees and walkability throughout the town. Now, we also want to increase the sense of community. So what we did is by adding more small businesses throughout uh, the Lower Bulkhead District, like a market slash cafe bakery. Now, these areas can be used for community spaces for the town to gather and to congregate and reminisce within each other. Um, 
we increase, the popul or increase their business by th uh, three times the amount. Now these spaces are not just paved areas. These spaces are also green spaces that are like pocket parks and creek walks throughout it. Now we were hoping that these would encourage more healthy activity and walkability throughout the districts and help the connectivity throughout the town through residential and commercial districts. Now I'll give it to Shane. Hello, my name is Shane Joyce and I also worked with one other student, Elizabeth Parker, who couldn't make it today. And I worked on the upper bulkhead area, as you can see on the rectangle, which was um, part of the same site just previously talked about. Uh, this is a site map oriented north, and we mainly focused on the east side with the two larger buildings, and we also touched on part of the northwest side, and it was mainly to redevelop the areas to push parking behind the buildings so you didn't have massive parking lots, um, distracting views, and engagement with the community. This is a typical street section of that road that also runs down the previous site talked about, and there is a 10-foot walkway on each side, and there's also um, four-foot four bike lanes on each side, and uh, off-street parking on the east side to uh, accommodate the businesses that we are proposing. Uh, one thing that has been talked about in the community is introducing a new community center, and that's uh, more of a grander community center to engage all um, ages in uh, the area. And it would include a gym and administration, also other public areas, classrooms. The next thing that we introduced that does not currently exist is a transportation hub. The Broadway Street is highly traveled, people coming to and from Pennsylvania. So if we thought there was a stop um, that buses are coming through or any cars that could stop and use the new businesses that we are proposing and also a general information kiosk for anyone new or um, visiting Southport. Um, towards the southern end, we want to introduce a new um, uh, commercial center that is adjacent to the site and it matches, it kind of brings the continuity through. And there would also be dwelling spaces above the, the businesses on the first floor for low income and all ranges of income. In between the community center and uh, the commercial center, we want to have a green space and also a sculptural lounging space that uh, ties them into each other. And this is our final site of the proposed. Uh, the darkened buildings are the buildings that we want to either uh, propose or replace um, existing buildings, and you can see the green space ties the suburbs into the Broadway Street with the sculptural green area. And I'll turn it over to Sharif. Hello, my name is Sharif Haidarovich. I work alongside Shiharu Kamioka on the Southland Plaza, this region in the red rectangle. The overall goal for this region was to create a center for living and working for the residents that lived farther away from the center of Southport. To achieve this goal, we developed a pedestrian-friendly street we moved businesses closer to the street, and we also worked on the area adjacent the creek. To create a more pedestrian-friendly street, we added a secondary sidewalk on the south side of the street to promote walkability. We added bike lanes to promote biking. We also suggested planting trees for shading. And we also provided on-street parking. For the buildings that we designed, we we designed it so they could house existing businesses as well as new proposed businesses on the first floor. And on the second floor would house small scale apartments for smaller, smaller families. And we also redesigned their grocery center to act as a marker for the residents as well as visitors of the town. Adjacent to Creek, we developed a small plaza and a path that would lead from the lower bulkhead to the South Town Plaza for biking, jogging, and walking. We also developed a small center that would provide information for residents and visitors of the local wildlife and of the town's history. I'll leave you off with a small overview of what we did like in the town and the creek as well. And I'll pass it on to the residential portion with the Brookside Manor. Hello, my name is Andrew Scott and I worked with Stacy DeWink on the Brookside Manor neighborhood outlined in red which is adjacent to South Town Plaza. This map is the final phase after 15 years of Brookside Manor. Uh, the colors in addition represent uh, single family housing, duplexes, townhouses, senior apartments, mixed use facilities, green spaces, a bookmobile station, and a Bach exchange boxes. <clears throat> this is a typical street plan street section of with the additions that we have, including street trees, uh, sidewalks, and new housing, which is now closer to the road. 
We also looked at revitalizing existing parks with more friendly formal entrances and adding basketball court, playground, a community garden, and then this would also be a place for the book exchange boxes to be located. And um, there was also a Chemung County bookmobile that travels around the county, and currently it stops in the commercial area, but the children and the elderly that don't necessarily drive can't get to it very easily, so we looked at moving it into the residential neighborhood. There was also a request for more senior apartments because of the aging population. Um, so this would provide a place where seniors could move to and still live in the community without having to take care of a property but still be able to live on their own. Residentially speaking, we also implemented, uh, we also proposed uh, an increase in density and we did this by uh, using townhouses. Um, the idea was to not only increase, increase uh, the density but also uh, be used as low-income housing for people that don't necessarily can afford a uh, residential house. Um, and many of these townhouses are located on old, the old trailer park in the area. We also implemented a mixed-use area, and the idea was for it to be a transition between the commercial area of Southtown Plaza and the residential area of Brookside Manor. Uh, the first story is commercial, while the second story is residential. Now we'll move it over to Universal Village. Hello, my name is Cody Tompkins. I worked alongside Elizabeth Duell and Brady Morrison on the two red sections, which are Universal Village on the right and Lower Mount Zora on the left. This is a final proposed phase three um, site plan for Universal Village. We tried to increase the density of this neighborhood by proposing 44 single family infill housing units and eight multifamily infill housing units. And we wanted to increase the walkability and connectivity by implementing or proposing bike routes and sidewalks on the major routes. We also proposed three pocket parks on existing uh, cul-de-sacs in the neighborhood. This is the final proposed phase three site plan for Lower Mount Zor. We proposed 53 single family infill housing on existing vacant lots and increase the connectivity with sidewalks and bike routes connecting it to central Southport. This is a typical street section for both areas. We proposed a five foot landscaping strip, sidewalks and street trees on both sides of major streets. This helped us to increase the connectivity and it provided a safer community getting people off of the streets and it improved the curb appeal of the existing neighborhood. My name is Elizabeth Duell. Uh, the parks that we designed for the Universal Village area would fill the currently vacant lots in the center of the cul-de-sac areas. Uh, these would create community gathering spaces and bring the community outside. And these would also enhance the overall neighborhood appearance. So these would be places where you could come and have a picnic, bring your kids to play, or just sit outside and enjoy the atmosphere. We designed additions for existing homes in the area due to the community's express need for uh, older housing types to, that are very, very similar to be uh, updated. So we, came, we looked at the typical styles in the area and they were very similar and didn't have a lot of variation and tried to make them maybe a little bit larger uh, for bigger families and have a little bit of variation. So then finally we designed uh, new houses for the area because there are so many vacant lots throughout the neighborhood that need to be filled. And we tried to use a uh, similar character in the houses that we designed. However, uh, tried to again vary the styles and options while keeping them affordable. So finally with our entire uh, studio uh, classes work. We presented a final presentation to the town of Southport, in the town of Southport. This meeting was open to the community and we had quite a crowd show up. 
the community was very enthusiastic about seeing this vision that they had uh, had the ideas for and we had tried to come up with designs for, and it came to life. So, but one of the biggest questions and concerns that they had was, how can we possibly uh, have this happen in our town? It would cost so much money. So what we had found from case studies was that there is um, similar towns that have had this happen over uh, the similar lifespans uh, through grants and private investment and also spreading this vision. So these are on public display at the Rochester uh, Community Design Center. And uh, we had a lot of opportunities with the media and the newspaper, local television. And all 12 students in our studio, urban design studio, participated in this project, along with leadership from our professor, Bill Dean. And uh, we really want to thank all of the community that helped us. And we want to thank the Appalachian, Appalachian Regional Commission. Thank you very much. Hi, um, I'm Lexi from Virginia Tech, and I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit more about how you came to the 15-year build-out plan. How'd you get to the 15 years? Um, so originally, we actually had taken uh, Hunt's Architects uh, uh, comprehensive plan, and that was a 10-year out plan. And then after going through the town and talking to the town officials, we actually kind of came to the conclusion that what the town needed was actually more than 10 years. So we kind of brought it out another five years. And so then we phased it out within three, uh, so it would be a five, 10, and 15 year plan. So that was kind of like how we came to that. Hi, I'm Natalie, I'm from Virginia Tech. Um, I had a question about your design strategy. Um, the design looks really modern and like it's all new construction. Um, how does this scheme complement the existing architecture and celebrate the local culture? Um, are you planning to keep any of the local architecture? Um, and if so, are you planning to engage in or utilize historic preservation tax credits? Um, a lot of the new buildings that you saw, it's more of like a vision, so it's like a concept. And not that we couldn't do any new type of style of architecture, but in uh, the lower bulkhead district that Clayton had gone over, it uses traditional materials like brick, but we also really want to like tell you that they're new buildings. We don't want to like make new buildings that look like all buildings. We don't want to like lie to people. And that was a lot of what we were trying to do. So um, like the new modern buildings that you saw that were very modular, they try to use new materials, but maybe assimilate to old materials. And it all goes back to, you know, how the town actually developed was like baby boomers post-World War II. So maybe it's like a, like a reintroduction of that, like a uh, new boom after a war. <clears throat> to be honest, most of their actual commercial district didn't have a lot of buildings. They're actually kind of just houses that had been modified to be businesses. So what we were implementing is actually more of a business structure. So we tried to create more of a plan that wasn't a futuristic, but was still a little more modern in feel because this is for the next generation. It isn't for the generation that's there right now. So you wanted them to give them a more newer building. Hi, my name is Millie. Um, so building off of Natalie's question, but moving beyond just architecture, um, I was wondering how the plan promotes cultural sustainability um, for this Appalachian town. I understand that New York has a different kind of Appalachian feel than the more southern states, but um, I was wondering where in your plan cultural sustainability came into play. Um, so we looked at revitalizing some of the parks that there were um, with the, there's a creek that runs to the south of the town. Um, so we looked at adding a creek walk along the, um, the creek so it would bring people out and into the community and talking to each other more because right now there's not a whole lot of space for people to work together um, in the town like with where walking distance. There are parks outside of the town that people can go to, um, but definitely the green spaces really connect the con connect the area while providing for a place for culture to thrive. 
Also, um, if you kind of, I know our, the images we showed, the buildings are more overpowering. If you look at the plans, we really added, there's almost everywhere that we worked on, we added sidewalks on both sides, and we also added crosswalks that usually don't exist, and those are all up, all up along, and also we added, I don't think we mentioned, we added bus stops so there's more transit. So we really made the entire town walkable, walkable and connected to the suburbs and the commercial district that we're trying to propose. Also, we, just to the north of Southport is the city of Elmira, and they really rely on that for all their grocery shopping, and that's where most of the people in Southport work. So we wanted to make them more self-sustainable so that they could have their own culture away from the city of Elmira. Any more questions from this group? If not, we'll take maybe a question or two from somebody else. Hi, I'm Savannah from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Um, you mentioned a lot that you wanted to bring in small businesses, uh, but you mentioned also that it was more of a thoroughfare than an actual like place with its own businesses. So how would you incentivize getting more small businesses to either start or move into this town? I mean, to be honest, uh, Southport has some small businesses now, um, but most of the businesses are like a Pizza Hut and like a Taco Bell. Uh, so I don't really consider them a real small business, but. Uh, so the incentive for that is that the community wants it and you know when we talked to the community it was it really isn't us opposing our ideas we literally took the idea of what the community wanted so it's not just we're proposing the, we're just fulfilling a need of how they could do that so I mean I don't know if I answered your question but that's kind of what we did I think also that so this is kind of like a gradual back and forth between the commercial areas and the residential areas with getting investors to come in and provide diverse housing options to bring more people in, and then also providing more businesses. So it's like a back and forth to increase uh, the population and the businesses. Okay, let's give a round of applause to Alfred State. Good job.